2016 air conditioning on this Toyota Forester. Completely under vacuum, ready to recharge. We have the liquid position, lines filled with liquid. Now I don't always say this because I'm a bad instructor and I figure most everybody should know this or they'll learn it later in one of my other videos. And if they don't watch them, well, that's not my problem. That's too much to teach. So in this length line set, there is 30, I get asked this question all the time in my earlier videos, I used to do this and then I stopped doing it to make it simple. But then the smarter people have asked me the question, is there liquid and does it have a weight and do you have to compensate for it? And yes, you do. I'm sorry I don't mention this in all my videos, but there's a lot of things to mention. Um, so in this particular line at this length, there is 30 grams of refrigerant, of liquid refrigerant inside there. And yes, you do have to compensate it for it. Now, when I'm doing two or three cars and I have a leak test, I will sometimes, and most a lot of times, when you see me do this in my video, I am charging all the way up to the factory weight, whatever it says, but I'm not saying that I'm compensating for the 30 grams in there and I'm gonna take this disconnected and I'm going over to say the other car, that's YF, that has a leak problem. And I'm gonna take this refrigerant that is 30 grams left in there after I charged it up to 410 grams. And I'm gonna keep the 30 grams inside there, go over to the other vehicle that has zero PSI or two or three PSI. And I'm gonna use that 30 grams to help me find a leak over in that car because immediately when I'm finished with car number one, I'm taking the set of gauges and I'm going to car number two, snapping it on there, um, tightening down the fitting and injecting that leftover 30 grams into the system, breaking out the leak checker and going right into a leak check mode. I don't mention that in all the videos or I just take my low side fitting and on my recovery unit, I just simply, because I have an adapter that goes to the fitting that threads onto my recovery machine and I just thread it on there and I just hook up my adapter, screw it on and recover it right into my tank. There's just too many steps to mention everything. When you see me make an instruction video, a how to from step A to step Z, one to 10, whatever it is, you will know because it will be detailed when I do take the time to make such a video. Okay, so we're down here at roughly under 200 microns and let's get the show on the road. So I have the vapor off, the low side is off. Let's turn off the vacuum. So we're gonna close the vacuum, vacuum is closed. The liquid is still closed in that yellow. As you can see here, the high side is open and the high side, I'm gonna dump the refrigerant into the high side. So let's uh, close, close, make sure we want 500 grams. I already zeroed it out, but I bumped it. There, we have zero grams. We want 410. So let's compensate. I already have 30 in here off of 410. So that means I need 380 grams to show on this scale. And when I close off this valve in here, there's actually 30 grams that's already zeroed out. That will equal 410 grams. Plus the roughly, let's say in vapor, after you open up your hose and you run your vehicle and you open up or disconnect your high side, you suck in the liquid refrigerant that is stored in the high side into the system that is running under a lower pressure slowly into the low side and this will remove the liquid refrigerant out of there. I haven't gone into that detail, but I'm mentioning it now because I've been getting a lot of those questions. And let's go through this process. What do we want? 380 grams. So my hand is right here. I'm gonna open and control the flow of the refrigerant here. We are gonna watch right here. One, two, go. So now we're putting in, and we're gonna put in 380 grams. There, that's it, done. So that's roughly 380 grams, plus or minus 10 grams. Now, I take the container and I'm shutting the valve. I just trapped 
30 grams of refrigerant. 30 grams of refrigerant is trapped in this line. So open it back up and you'll see that the high side is lower and it's equaling out on this vehicle because it doesn't have a hard shut off like some of the other vehicles. And let's close that. This is closed. Most of it dropped down into the system. Let's take this out of the way so it doesn't drop down into the belts. Okay, so we are closed. Now let's start up the vehicle. AC, give me max AC, let's just go for it. It's running, here's your pressures. The high side is closed. Now, I have refrigerant stuck in here, so let's watch. I'm going to open this up a little bit. You see that jump up? That was the refrigerant that I have going in this manifold because this is open and I just let a little through. There you go again, went up. Here we go again, went up, and that's it. It's now vapor. It now sucked out the refrigerant that was in liquid form in this yellow hose in the manifold down through the low side. You see this? See this? That is closed, that is closed. Now let me close the low side. And that's it. It is hot. This is that is cold. We have 29.52. 52 psi on the high side. That is the high side pressure, and that is normal for these ambient operating conditions. 29.52. 29.52. Right now operating at high idle for this system that is normal under these ambient conditions as you can see the temperature by this little thermometer right here that temp sensor it's 53 degrees outside all right i'll come back to this vehicle let it stay uh, i'll let the idle drop and uh we'll see what the rest of the readings are after about five or ten minutes of operation